This meeting is now being recorded. Okay. So greetings everyone and thank you for taking the time to join us this afternoon. This webinar is intended to provide interested applicants with an overview of the available funding opportunity being awarded by Idaho Career and Technical Education for our Limited Occupational Specialist Certified Educator Cohort Program. We will also provide an explanation of expectations for project recipients, an overview of the application process, and a chance to ask questions. This webinar will be recorded and the recording, slides, and the transcript of the, quest of the Q and A will be made available on the project website. In today's webinar, we are going to review the purpose of this project and some important definitions. We will remind everyone of those who are eligible to apply for this project. Additionally, we will identify given expectations of this project, as well as discuss project deliverables that the institutions of higher education may tailor to an extent. Finally, we will review the process for completing and submitting the application materials. The funds for this project are available through state leadership funds to serve limited occupational specialists pursuant to IDAPA 08-02-02-1509. Funds are allocated to Idaho Career and Technical Education through approval of Idaho State Legislature. It is ICTE that administers these funds in Idaho. The purpose of the project is to provide an alternative route to supporting and training limited occupational specialist certificate holders. Through this cohort project, LOS certificated teachers will be able to successfully achieve their standard occupational specialist certificate within three years. We are now seeking local providers to carry out quality LOS training and support within this cohort framework. We will get into greater depth about the definition of limited occupational specialist later in this webinar. Our priority will be to support ongoing and holistic programs. Funds are not intended to support one-time projects or single-purpose purchases. Applicants who are selected for funding will receive annual grants for a period of three years. Grantees who remain in good standing after the initial two years may continue to receive grants each year at the discretion of the state. Applicants will be asked to submit annual program plans and reports in subsequent years in order to receive continued funding. The state reserves the right to recompete the funds at any time after the initial three-year funding period concludes. Applications for this grant will be due on April 15, 2017. We anticipate that funding decisions will be made and applicants notified sometime in May. At this time, ICTE does not have budget figures to guide your application. We wish for you to request the funding that will allow your institution to successfully deliver this project's program in the region or regions you've, cho you've chosen to apply for. Applicants should be aware that final grant awards may change based on negotiation between ICTE and your institution. Limited occupational specialists are those individuals with content-rich experience who come to teaching from an industry setting. Most will lack, to some extent, the educational structure and design knowledge to deliver effective instruction in a classroom and lab setting. The INSPIRE LOS cohort is one of two means to educate LOS instructors in the pedagogy and strategies and CTE processes that will allow them to be effective in training learners at the secondary and post-secondary levels. Eligible applicants for this project are public institutions of higher education who have state, state board approved teacher education or teacher education transition programs in place currently. IHEs may apply to serve one region, two or more regions, or all six regions. Under IDAPA code 08-0202-1509, Industry specialists in career technical education careers can become instructors of grades six through adult learners. 
Most often, industry specialists are awarded a limited occupational specialist certificate, often referred to as an LOS, and must achieve at least a standard occupational specialist certificate, a SOS, by the end of the LOA, excuse me, by the end of the LOS validation period. Certificate holders achieve an SOS certificate through meeting certain requirements. These requirements include participating in the CTE 2017 Summer Academy, participating in new teacher induction workshops, completing training and demonstrating competency in two required areas, principles, foundations of career technical education, and instructional methods for career technical education. Completing training and demonstrating competency in at least two of the following areas, curriculum development and analysis, career guidance, transition information, and measurement and evaluation, and filing the development, a professional development plan with ICTE. That development plan is for the ensuing validation period. While all limited occupational specialist certificate holders will need to participate in statewide training for summer academy and new teacher induction, and all limited occupational specialist certificate holders will need to file a professional development plan for the validity of period of the certificate, LOSs will now have the choice to complete remaining required training through coursework taken at Idaho State University or the University of Idaho, or through competency-based training as a participant in a two-year learning cohort. This slide provides an overall picture of the INSPIRE cohort two-year training. Secondary and post-secondary LOS participants will most often be trained together, but at times, trainers will invoke the option to separate class-level groups when deemed appropriate. This five-part representation of training meetings and observation is a high-level view, with many additional details to be expanded upon as we proceed through this session. As one example, there will be pre-work that needs to be completed prior to attendance at some trainings. For instance, we are planning for a pre-work component that LOS participants must complete ahead of attending this year's Summer Academy. Additionally, LOS participants will have assignments and projects that are completed between formal trainings and are added to their individual electronic portfolio to document their knowledge and performance of established requirements. It is important to note again that the Year 1 Summer Academy training will be attended by all LOS certificated instructors, regardless of how they choose to complete the remaining training. A note on this slide that wasn't, slide, that wasn't cited in the project release refers to the new teacher induction workshop. This workshop is for all first-year teachers, regardless of whether they come through a degree-based program or enter teaching as a second career after having been in industry. This induction workshop can be taught regionally during the October trainings, and degree-based teachers can be identified and enjoyed, excuse me, they can be identified and invited to join on this one day. We do have options to reconsider this element once trainers have been hired. In addition to training, classroom observations should be conducted a minimum of three times for each cohort participant. You can refer to the training calendar on our project website for additional schedule details. The first year of the Summer Academy is for all newly LOS certified instructors at the secondary and post-secondary levels. It is immaterial whether the LOS participant will choose to complete remaining coursework through a university program or through the cohort process. The overarching goal of the Year 1 Summer Academy session is to ready all LOS participants to enter the fall classroom in a strong, capable way. The four to five days of training through the Year One Summer Academy will touch on all core teacher preparation standards and allow LOS participants to begin to demonstrate their understanding. The Year One Summer Academy will be repeated during the week of Labor Day in order to accommodate new LOS instructors hired in school districts and institutions of higher education after July 15th. By the conclusion of the Year One Summer Academy, all LOS participants will declare their intention to complete the balance of training by participating in coursework through Idaho State University or the University of Idaho, or by participating in cohort training as a member of a regional cohort 
over the two ensuing years. The Year 2 Summer Academy will serve second year Inspire cohort participants only. These participants will participate more fully in the 2018 REACH Conference to gain a deeper understanding of program information and standards and competencies, as well as curriculum alignment. Approximately one and a half days will be spent on cohort-focused training. Training for both summer academies will be conducted by the INSPIRE training team. Regional monthly training is scheduled for one Saturday per month. Training is staggered between regions to allow for LOS participants to cross regions when necessary to avoid absences. Training will run from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on scheduled Saturdays, with one hour scheduled for lunch on participants' own. It is possible to shift the hours in each region as long as the hours and schedule content are met. Projects and assignments will be scheduled in between meetings. This is the type of work that will be submitted to each LOS participant's electronic portfolio. To the extent possible, projects and assignments will extend work done in the natural course of employment as an instructor. While the content of the cohort has been mapped out in Attachment C, INSPIRE trainers will work with the INSPIRE team to derive content delivery and hone the delivery schedule. At a minimum, it will be ensured that the content will include university coursework goals, and all educator preparation program standards to a degree. They will also um, include other pieces that are deemed important by the team. Observation and mentoring is the final component included in the INSPIRE LOS cohort. It is expected that an instructional mentor travel within regions to observe and coach LOS participants on at least three occasions per year. It is imperative that the role of this mentor will be well-defined in that this mentor is not a supervisor that conducts a performance review or contributes to employment decisions. In terms of hiring for this position, it is possible for this individual to be different from the individual holding the training position. Observation notes will be added to the electronic, electronic portfolio of each LOS participant as evidence of understanding and demonstration. So, which LOS certificated instructors can participate in the INSPIRE cohort model? First, all participants in the cohort must be hired as a CTE instructor at an Idaho Technical College or school district for the 2017-18 school year. This requirement meets two needs. Assignments and portfolio work will draw on actual activities in the LOS participants' teaching position. And secondly, district and technical college administrators administration has the opportunity to help defray some or all travel expenses incurred by the LOS instructor through the use of added costs or post-secondary CTE funding. Recall that there is no cost to participants for tuition expenses. The ability to participate in the cohort also varies based on the expiration date of the LOS teacher certificate. As this is the beginning year of this project, we will need to accommodate multiple certificate validity date issues. As you can see on this slide, no LOS certificate holder with an expiration date of 2017 will be able to participate in the cohort. 2018 expirees have one year left in their certificate's validity period, but need two years to complete the cohort. For this group, and in order to assist districts and CTE programs, ICTE is actively working to establish the CTE Alternative Authorization Advisory Committee structure that can grant a one-year extension on that certificate. Cohort enrollees with a 2018 or 2019 expiry date will need to commit to completing the cohort successfully in this single two-year period that they have available to them upcoming this fall. Beginning with the 2020 expiration year, however, cohort participants can choose one of two two-year training periods. For obvious reasons, ICT strongly encourages these candidates to enter the cohort in the initial year of their certification. LOS participants are expected to commit to full attendance over the two-year cohort training. In extenuating circumstances, one absence will be allowed over two years with prior attendance clearance. It is expected that all work will be made up. 
If a participant fails to comply with attendance requirements, he or she may be released from the cohort. At that point, the LOS participant may need to enroll in university courses to complete certification requirements. The bulk of participant training costs associated with the cohort project will be the indirect responsibility of Idaho Career and Technical Education through the project funds. There will be no tuition fee associated with the training. Travel expenses will be the responsibility of the, all, of the LOS participant, but may be defrayed by the local district or technical college. CTE funds, including Perkins funding, may be utilized to assist the LOS participant with these expenses. Please make note, however, that anticipated expenses must be budgeted and receive approval through our office if required. Other expenses associated with the cohort training include the need for an electronic portfolio system. Participants are required to demonstrate their knowledge and performance on a number of competencies. The electronic portfolio will allow institutional trainers and ICTE personnel to assure competency, evaluate training effectiveness, and access documents from various state locations. We anticipate this expense to be approximately $100 per LOS participant, this can be, if you will, the buy-in that the LOS participant makes or it can be defrayed by his or her employer. Another expense is purely at the discretion of the LOS participant, the purchase of transcripted credits. It will be the responsibility of the student to negotiate this credit with an institution of higher ed and to pay for such credit. The instructional mentor is the individual who carries out the training, observation, and coaching of the LOS participants in the INSPIRE cohort. The instructional mentor can either be a new hire or the reassignment of an individual already working in the institution of higher education. It is possible and acceptable for more than one individual to fulfill these roles in a given region. All instructional coaches will work collaboratively with the ICTE Director of Certification and professional development, as well as other ICTE staff and guest presenters as deemed appropriate. Instructional mentors should be hired by July 1 in order to ensure their availability to participate in a week-long July training and curriculum development meeting here in Boise. The Appendix D attachment has other phrasing that is successfully project, excuse me. The Appendix D attachment has other phrasing that a successfully project awarded IHE may use in order to advertise the instructional mentor position. An LOS participant's competencies will be documented through their electronic portfolio. Additionally, each LOS participant in the INSPIRE cohort will be awarded micro certifications through the ICTE skill stack system. Whether an LOS participant can carry forward credit toward a degree will be at the discretion of the institution of higher education per Idaho Board of Education Policy 3L. In the interest of LOS candidates, it will be important to understand their future intent with respect to further education. If an LOS participant intends to pursue a baccalaureate or master's degree at a later time, that individual will be guided to take LOS to SOS coursework through the university of their choice. Program evaluation metrics will be derived by ICTE staff with the input of successful INSPIRE cohort project applicants. Applicants should note that these grant funds come with a high level of expectation and compliance. This slide and the next highlights some of the most important expectations and requirements of which applicants should be aware. Applicants who are selected to receive grants will receive hands-on technical assistance and training from this office. Because grantees can qualify to receive funds on an ongoing basis after the conclusion of the initial three-year period, it is our hope that over time, the upfront cost associated with compliance will be balanced against the benefits of a steady source of funding. I will briefly re review the major compliance and interested applicants are welcome to clarify or ask for more information when we open the floor for questions. 
So if you'll read with me on the slide, only inspire to educate authorized activities may be charged to grant funds. Funds may be only, only be expended in accordance with approved budgets. Grantees must keep time and effort reports and documentation of expenditures. Funds are provided on a reimbursement basis. Grantees must collect student performance data according to state guidelines for educator preparation. Grantees must submit regular reports as specified by ICTE. Grants are subject to monitoring and evaluation. Grantees are expected to participate in professional development activities and make such activities available to staff. So far, I have covered the types of activities that will be supported with project funds, the entities who can apply for funds, and the expectations and compliance requirements for selected grantees. Now I'd like to dive into the application itself. The application materials were published on our website on March 15, 2017. Applications will be due by 5 p.m. Mountain Time on April 15, 2017. We anticipate that funding decisions will be complete by mid-May. The state office will conduct final follow-up and negotiation with selected grantees, and funds will be available beginning July 1, 2017. Applicants should note that any expenditures made prior to July 1, 2017 may not be charged to this grant. The completed INSPIRE LOS cohort project application consists of several parts. The signature page, an information sheet, a written narrative regarding two areas of deliverables, a budget sheet and budget narrative, and IAT assurances. I have included notations to help you locate those items within the packet and attachments. Email completed application packets to inspire at cte.idaho.gov. The deliverables narrative noted on the previous slide is essentially a threefold response from the Institution of Higher Education. We recognize that this LOS cohort project is quite prescriptive in what and how training will be delivered. Through a narrative format, please confirm the institution's willingness to comply with the provisions as described. If the IHG takes exception with any areas of prescribed compliance, we ask that you note those exceptions and offer an alternative method for consideration. The balance of the narrative affords the IAG the opportunity to address two areas where there is some variability regionally and by institution. First, how does the IAG envision delivering the training? Who will deliver the instruction? Where and how will separate training be conducted when information differs for, for secondary and post-secondary participants? Secondly, considering the required observation component, how does the institution of higher education intend to meet the requirement for observation and feedback? To assist your understanding about the workflow that may exist for the region in which you're applying to deliver instruction and observation, please refer to the LOS demographics cited in attachment E. The total cost of the project will be based on the number of institutions and cohort participants involved in the project. Please refer to page 12 of the project application packet for additional details. Up to 5% of allocated funds may be used for administrative costs and indirect costs. The successful institutions may negotiate that percentage with ICTE if more is required. Project funds may be used to support travel and accommodations for training, observation, and curriculum development associated with the LOS cohort outcomes. At this point, I am going to open the floor for questions. In order to keep a complete transcript, we ask that all questions be submitting the Q&A feature in the webinar. Again, it is at the top of the screen to the right of center. If you have a question that is not answered here today, please know that our office is here to help. If a portion of the application is not clear, or if you don't understand what or how a document should be formatted or submitted, please reach out to us. We can't tell you how to respond to a question, but we can provide clarification and technical assistance. With that, I would like to open the floor.
So my first question regards being able to hear. Um, I'm sorry, and I apologize, Joni. I was monitoring the public chat and didn't notice that um, you could not hear me. So my apologies, and hopefully the recording will help you at a later time. A question, why is time and effort reporting required? I think for to respond to that, that is somewhat negotiable. I think being a new project, we need to understand what the project is entailing, and we're hoping that we can find a way to record what is being expended in terms of time and effort so that we can understand maybe what we need to plan for in the future. Hopefully I'll answer that more thoroughly um, on the Q&A portion that I respond to after. But again, I would say that, that that part is somewhat negotiable. Other questions? Okay, so seeing none that are coming in. Okay, just received one. Hold on just a second. Give you just a couple more minutes here. Oh, okay, so this question used the public chat. I'm going to ask that you please go up to the Q&A and put the question in. I will add it to here. Will reimbursement be allowed for the academy participants? So you may, um, I'm not sure what this is asking. Will reimbursement be allowed for the academy participants? You cannot use this project fund to reimburse the academy participants for anything. Um, that should be monies coming out of their local or their own personal funds. So the travel, the accommodations, and so on, we are sincerely hopeful that you will use a portion of added cost funds for the secondary or Perkins or Perkins or some of the other post-secondary funds at the post-secondary level to help defray some of those expenses. We are hoping that the institutions and school districts recognize that they are hiring a limited occupational specialist, and that they will join with us to support that LOS in their training. So once again, to clarify on that question, you, we cannot um, allow you to, re, to reimburse academy participants or LOS cohort participants out of the project money. Okay, next question, do we need to include a transition plan for students who begin with INSPIRE but later decide to transition to a university program? I would be open to hearing what you might um, believe would be a prudent way of doing that. The transition plan for me would be just a revision of the professional development plan and that way we can ensure that communication happens between the colleges this office and the LOS participant. Another question, Christy, will funding be available before July 1st to help pay for position searches? At this point, that has not been planned for. It is something that I can certainly bring forward, um, but the answer right now is no. And if that answer changes, I will be glad to note that on the Q&A portion. Um, that is posted to our website with this particular recording. So the next question is, if a student starts with INSPIRE but then has to transition to a university program, for any of a number of reasons, would that student need to start over with the universities? In the planning call that took place in March, my understanding from the universities is the answer is yes, that the student would need to start those classes over. I'm not sure that they would be given credit by the universities um, for what they have, what they did participate in in Inspire. Know that in Inspire. We are blending all courses together, and the contents, the competencies, and standards will be spread throughout. So there's no, there's no chunk anywhere for a full class. 
it will be by the time you reach the end of two years, you will have accomplished the standards and competencies for all courses and beyond that. Okay, any other questions? Okay, at this point I don't see anything else coming in. I sincerely appreciate the time that everyone took today. Um, we certainly have come short of an hour, which I know that you'll all be very sad about. But just enjoy the break that you're going to get for the next 25 minutes or so. Thank you for your interest in the program. Know that we are here and we'll be glad to receive calls or contacts from you concerning um, this project as you continue to write your applications. We look forward to receiving those on April 15th or sooner. And it's just a pleasure to know that we're going to be able to work together so closely. So have a wonderful day and I will talk with you soon. Thank you so much.